Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step guide on how to retouch this particular image here. I believe by now you have seen exactly the last result we got. All right, so without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. And before I forget, you are getting this note here, this note that we're going to be learning also how to put in our image. You are going to get it for free in this particular one. All you need to do is just to make sure you are a part of our WhatsApp community because that is where we are going to be sharing it. So if you want to join our WhatsApp community, just click on the WAP link in the description of the video and you will have access to our WhatsApp community. All right, so without wasting your time, let's quickly get started. The first thing I would want to do is, of course, crop my image. And I want to give her a lot of space here. Yeah? So I'll just crop in like this, beautiful. Somewhere around here, then press enter. Then I'll pick up my rectangular marquee tool and just make a rough selection at the edges. So I could just fill it up, then know what to do with the areas that are not filled up. All right, so we need to patch a little bit inwards here. Very good, right click, go to fill. Make sure your content are where it's done on them. Press OK. All right, so it's gone. Beautiful. That is it. <laughs> That's simple. So the next thing we want to do, yeah, we pick up our, uh, our patch chilling tool and just fix this area. We're not yet working on the background. We're just going to work on the skin first. And to do that, we use our frequency separation action. I believe you have this action already. If you do not have uh, tons of videos, I think the last two videos we did where we gave out this particular action. So do make sure you check it out and have, get access to your own action. And of course, it still happens in the WhatsApp community. All right, so load up our frequency separation. I'll be keeping this one at three because it's a full body portrait and I wouldn't want to uh, lose a lot of details or retain a lot of textures as well. So we'll use our low frequency copy, pick up our mixer brush and quickly start painting. Just that simple. So can you decide to start anywhere? So let me see if I can start on her body. So that I can see the effect very well. All right. Yeah, I know it might appear like we're not doing anything, which is actually absolutely good. But the moment I turn on the before and after, you immediately see the result. Let me let me show you. The before, the after, yeah. It's there. They will come over to the face. We do what we ought to do. Yeah, for the cheek area, let's go in this way. Do the same thing here. Okay. So like I said, we do not need to spend a lot of time on one particular part of the body. It's already looking good. We just want to make sure she's looking smooth and flawless. But that doesn't mean we'll spend all the time doing it. Okay, so let's go down to the leg. That was a very quick one. Same here. All right, so let's go through what we've done so far. This is the before, this is the after, the before, the after. Okay, so I'm noticing here isn't as smooth as I would want it to be. So we'll go in one more time. Okay, so pick up your clone stamp because I'm noticing some rough edges on the hair which I want to fix. So I'll just pick up my clone stamp, sorry, my clone stamp. All right, so, and just fix that. I miss. Yeah. Okay, good. Look at this one over here, fix here as well. Yeah. 
And we are good. So the next thing I want to do is my dodging and burning. So I'll just quickly load up my brush and burn. Brush and my burn. Then pick up my brush. I'm keeping it somewhere at three. Oh, thank God it's already loaded at three. So the first thing we need to do is our dodging. Very quickly, just to give shines and glamour. Like I said, very quickly. Those are the areas that I know. Okay, I think this area needs some shines. These are the areas I'm painting. I'm okay. Look at this one over here. Give us some shine. Uh, same there. The cheeks. I'm zooming a bit. So the reason I'm doing this zooming out is so that I will see what it looks like immediately in real life. I do not need to zoom in so tight so that it doesn't, I don't end up doing stuff that I wouldn't approve of after. So I'm just looking at it, what it's appearing like immediately. All right, we are good. And that is it for our skin retouching. Done. So the next thing we're going to be working on now is our background. Very, very important. And this is where it gets even more interesting. So the next thing we need to do is to make a selection because we need to separate our object from our background. All right, so once our selection is done, right click to select inverse and of course minus the areas that you do not need in the selection. These two areas, yeah, of course. Go close, check out the dress. Very nice. Okay, so except for the fact that this area needs to enter the selection and this area needs to leave the selection, do the same thing here. Do the same thing here. Add up these areas too. Very good. All right, so the next thing we need to do is to make sure we smooth it out. So to do that, I'll make a duplicate of my background, right click and go to layer view cut. So there are a lot of ways you can do this. You can even use your mixer brush. You can separate your shadows and your highlights and do all of that. But of course, all those ways are perfect. And of course, you can just blow it out straight up and restore your shadows. And that is what we're going to be doing. So I'll hold my control, click on the background icon to reload the selection. Then go to my filter, go to blow, go to Gaussian blow, yeah, smoothing everything out for now. Okay, so press OK. We'll have everything smoothened out, but now nah, we are losing the shadows and the dimensions. And not just to talk about that, we are also not getting a very thick color. Everything is looking flat. So what do we do? We introduce a solid color in between my background and my object. So I have my, I have to take my object to the upper layer, then come down to my background go to solid color i still want to pick a color very close to what we have here so i will just minimize the solid color so i can or rather hide the solid color so i can now make a selection of the colors i have in my image so i think i'm going to be picking somewhere from her hair yeah press ok open it up and immediately you see how it's looking then we of course change the blend mode to, I think I'm going to work in with multiply so that I will have it dark. So the whole essence of the, the essence of the whole thing rather is to make sure that at the end of the day, we have a very clean image separated from the background, but I think this is too dark. Yeah, we'll reduce it a bit. Now we can start to restore the shadows back by just, you know, Picking up our brush and restoring in this area. So just create a mask for the shadow. Make sure it's in a black brush and just paint over the shadow areas, over the areas where the shadows are originally meant to be. So we can do before and after. We'll see where it is and we'll go over there. Just that simple. See the way it's coming back. We can as well check again before and after. We are good who we'll have enough shadows already. So the next thing we need to do is to bring in our smooth.
So how do I smooth properly load it up? So all we need to do is just to position it here. But we do not want it looking like it's far away. We want it properly fitted in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale in. Just use that, fill up my whole backdrop. Yeah, like that. Press enter. Of course, I know I do not need the floor. So I'll just create a mask for it and just clean it off the floor. Just like this. So the reason I'm using a very low opacity brush to do this is so that we we'll also have a very beautiful transition at the end of the day. Very good. Very good. And reduce this from here as well. The shadows we are too dark. Okay, so of course we need to reduce the opacity. Beautiful. So now you can even decide to say, okay, I think the scaling was too much. I need to push it back a little bit, stretch here a little bit more, just to get a very beautiful looking smooth at the end of the day. Very good. Check here out. I do not mind stretching. Okay, so press enter. The next thing is to color grade our image so that everything will come together. So that everything will come together. So to do that, I'm going to still use my solid color to color grade hard and do a general color grading. So I'll load up my solid color. Go to the hue section. I need something just slightly warm. But still in the dark things. This will serve. Press OK. I did make a duplicate of my objects. Create a mask for it. Go to select. Go to coloring. Pick up a skin tone and just go around. And this will do. Press OK. Use it to use the mask to replace that of the solid color. Now open up the solid color. So the reason we had to do this is so that we can see exactly the areas that are selected. I could have just done my soft light and all of that, but I need to minus it from the areas that I do not want it before I blend it in. So like these areas, of course, I do not want it there. So I'll just remove it from my hair. We don't may not remove everything entirely. Because the hair and the skin almost looks alike in color. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll have to add these areas of background. All right, so I'm going to leave it here. Or maybe remove it here. Let's remove it. Because we are color grading the skin, so let's remove it. Okay, so after doing that, change your blend mode to soft lights to see exactly what you have. Okay, so I'm noticing some irregularities in the skin tone. Some areas are not exactly the same color, so we need to blend the whole skin tone first. That is create a uniformity among all the skin tone then. Color grid, and to do that, we are going to now change it to color instead of soft light, so that we'll have a uniformity in our skin tone. Yeah, and try to make sure we we'll have a very clean mask. Okay, so I think we are good with our mask. So I'm just going to change the blend mode to color. Beautiful. Reduce the opacity. Reduce it to like 40 something. So we'll have a very uniform skin tone across our object. So the next thing is to make a duplicate of same solid color. Then now change one to soft light. So the essence is to get uniformity and still get a very beautiful skin tone at the end of the day. I think this is still clearly too much. All right. So the next thing we are going to do is just to create a global color grading that is going to bring everything together. Very important. So I'll just use any of my uh, color lookup tables over here that resonates so well with the whole image. I think I love what this is doing. This is absolutely beautiful. I said that it doesn't have contrast. So let's try adding contrast to it and see if it works. 
and it works pretty well. It works pretty well. We're going to stick with that. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to create a stamp visible layer. Go to my filter, go to my camera roll. So once in my camera roll, I'll just go down to my effects and just create a little bit of witness effect to it. Come right here, reduce my highlight a little, cost of address, add a little bit of contrast, open up my shadows a little, maybe add a bit of vibrance to the image and see what's pulling and warm dust to it. I think I prefer all the warm dust to it, then press OK. And we are good to go. So let me show you a very big overall before and after. So I'm going to create a snapshot from all the way to the top. So this is how it was when we started. And this is the final result. But thank you so much for watching. I believe you've learned quite a lot. Do not forget to join our WhatsApp community to get access to the snoot we use in this particular one. One more time, thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe, also turn on your notification bell so you get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.